From I-526 to last week's Charleston City Council meeting, I sit down one-on-one -on -one with City of Charleston Councilman Mike Seekings for a special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Or listen to this interview later on the free iHeartRadio app. Councilman Seekings. Yes, sir. Quentin, how are you? Nice to see you. Likewise. Well, you're a hot summer day. Sunday, yes. It is hot out there today, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Or like some of the issues that are out there right now, heating up. <laughs> you, you're right about that. Right. Let me take you to Columbia. The SID, the SCITB board, voted 4 to 3 to undo funding contract to complete the 526 project. Where do they go next? Well, like you, yesterday I was an observer of the proceedings up in Columbia, and I've read some of the commentary since the event happened and the vote and sort of where people think we're going. And, and, and let me say this about that. Um, as we sit here today in 2018, in a growing community, Charleston County and beyond, we have real transportation needs. We need relief, and we need projects that we can build now. Um, 526 has been contentious, as you know. It's a lightning rod of divis divisiveness around here. And whether it gets built or not, it's not happening tomorrow. Um, you've heard a lot of the post-vote yesterday commentary that this is going to happen in a court system. I'm a lawyer, as you know. I just actually finished a case that's been pending for 13 years. Wow. We can't wait another 13 years for some relief. So I'm a big believer, especially today as we sit here, that we need to build projects we can build, not ones that we can't. We need to fly over the James Island Connector on Folly Road and connect it so people can get back around there. We need 17 in Maine. We've got a wide Maybank Highway with the pitchforks. While we're waiting to see what the final tally is on 526, whether it's through a newly constituted SIB board, whether it's through the court, whether it's through the political process, let's start out there, get some relief in terms of roads and other forms of transportation, right? I mean, we all saw with the bridge going down at the Wando, Everyone from the governor's office to the secretary of transportation to all the local leaders realize there's multimodal responses to problems out there, and we need to get after that. And I know that the mayor was there as well. He basically just suggested, if I'm not, if I'm correct, a toll road. Well, again, I wasn't there. I've seen the highlights of some of it. Uh, I, I don't see a toll road being a real option at this point because you still have to get the money in advance to build the project. The money situation has to be resolved, and in the meantime, we've got to get out there and start thinking about what are we going to do tomorrow, particularly west of the Ashley, to give people some transit and transportation options, both in and out of their car. And as you know, we've been working hard on that, and I, and I, I just hope that the debate doesn't remain in the political realm and the legal realm and doesn't get out into the world so that projects that we know we can do today can get done. And you can call it any, anything you want, you can brand it any way you want. What we need is relief, multimodal, intelligent, current relief. And we're not there. And I, I, I don't know what happens next, but I'm hoping what happens next is everyone sits down and says, how do we get moving forward? The other thing is, that money, that SIV money, right. whatever it's used for, needs to be used here in Charleston County. That money needs to stay here. And to the extent that there's some idea that they're going to dissolve this contract and the money's going to dissipate and disappear into other parts of this state, I will be the first to get out there and fight for, for making sure that doesn't happen because we need to make sure that money gets spent here. We've got real needs. You talk about fighting, you talk about moving forward, you talk about debates. Let me take you to Charles City Hall. Sure. Last week was one of the most interesting city hall meetings ever. I know that you said before voting yes on that particular vote for the city apologizing for its role in slavery, you basically said, hey, tonight's vote was a highly political theater and urged citizens to remain involved in the issues. You said, quote, the real work is going to come at page 12 and beyond, referring to affordable housing and other items. Right. Where do we begin? Well, it was an interesting evening, for sure. It was a long evening. Um, as you may recall, if you were watching, if you were there that night, I had my law partner's young son, who's a rising junior at um, Academic Magnet, and I think it was fascinating for him to learn a little bit about history. There was a lot of history lessons to be learned in that chamber. Right. And something about the political process. Yes, political theater. That was political theater for sure. Um, but in the end, uh, we did the right thing at that moment. Now, what goes forward? Well, as I said, I was referring to page 12 of our that night's agenda right. where we were on page 2 debating this resolution. And we still had 10 pages of business to do. 
all of which included flooding relief, transportation, affordable housing. Those are the things that we need to work on equitably, realistically, in a city that's growing and make sure that nobody gets left behind. And nowhere is that really more evident in my mind than the affordable housing realm. And, and we've just got to come up with some solutions that work. And I don't think we're there yet, by the way. And you talked about public transportation earlier. I want to take it back to last week. Dump the pump. Oh. So, you know, one of the, the great joys and honors in my life is to serve as the chairman of CARTA. It has been um, a great challenge. This is a, these are exciting times for a transportation group that is really finding its way in an area that needs public transit. Um, we're finally solvent. We are not operating at a deficit. We're working hard to bring a product to the community that people want to use. We're upgrading our routes. We're upgrading our buses. As you know, until a year ago, we operated the oldest fleet of buses in America. So under the last three years with Ron Mitchum as our executive director and under my leadership, our number one objective has been to upgrade our fleet, get our routes going, and then see what we can do to expand into the community. And one of the things we've done in the last few months, which you've seen, is the hospitality shuttle downtown. And that has been a really a, an amazing process to see it unfold. There were many skeptics that it wouldn't work, no one would use it. It is being used. We're averaging about 350 riders a day. We're about to go over the eight, 9,000 rider mark in three months. Um, we're already talking about expansion. Now, that being said, we've got to make sure it's a good quality project. Uh, it operates 21 hours a day, right. every 15 minutes. I've ridden a number of times. So transit and transportation, which is really one of the three prongs of things we need to be talking about, transit, transportation, affordable housing, and flooding, we're really coming a long way. Uh, Low Country Rapid Transit is on its way to a tri-county area near you. That's the Charleston, Berkeley, Dorchester tri-county area. That's a real project. Um, we are now showing people that there are ways to move around other than in your car alone and dump the pump last week was a huge success. We got lots of people out there. I rode pretty much all day. Um, talked with a lot, caught up with a lot of people I hadn't seen in a while actually. Yes, true. <laughs> talked with lots of riders and got lots of great feedback, both from people who have lived here for years, people who just moved here, who are looking for ways to get around. And we take it seriously. And, and I will tell you, um, my role in this community going forward is going to be whatever role I can have to make sure that we address transportation, affordable housing, and flooding and you know sort of go back to the first question you asked about 526 to me as we sit here today following what happened with the SIB and all the other things that are going on that's now code we've got a 526 problem that's code for we've got a planning problem in the future on how we're going to move people around this community particularly west of the rivers and if we're going to wait through the court system till we even start a project that's a mistake if we're not going to wait for court systems till we do flooding relief we're not going to wait for court systems or politicians until we get some affordable housing. We've got to act now. And the challenge for all leaders and members of this community is to demand action, and it's time. It really is. I mean, I just don't want to be sitting here with you 10, 15 years out talking about what the Supreme Court did in its decision on whether the SIB funded a project that we should have built 40 years ago or not built 40 years ago. That's just not a viable way to go about it. We've got to fix the flooding. We've got to get people out. Um, out of those traffic jams, and we got to get some affordable housing. I mean, that's the mantra. Councilman Mike Seekings, thank you so much for your time. We really, really appreciate thank this. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime, man. Thank you. Yes, sir.